Hello everyone, this is part 2 of the monoclonal antibody production example. In part 1, I gave an overview of the monoclonal antibody process as modeled in SuperPro Designer, and I also demonstrated which type of outputs can be obtained after building a model and solving its mass and energy balances. In this video, I will discuss several features of this model, such as operating a unit procedure in cycles, accounting for transfer panels and delivery lines, modeling inline dilution, and handling backpropagation. Furthermore, if you still don't have a copy of SuperPro Designer, make sure to visit our website www.intelligent.com where you can download an evaluation version of the tool. Let's now continue this tutorial by discussing how to operate a unit procedure in cycles. As you may remember from part one of this tutorial, I mentioned that all the chromatography columns applied in this model are operated in cycles. Operating the columns in cycles gives you the advantage of increasing the column time utilization while reducing the required size. When operating in cycles, it's important to recognize that the amount of cycles specified apply to all of the operations in the procedure. Therefore, if there are operations which you only do once using that procedure, for example at the beginning and the end, such as pre-processing and post-processing operations, the only way to represent it is to have separate procedures that utilize the same equipment. For that reason, the columns in this model have been divided into three unit procedures. To specify that a unit procedure operates in cycles, you need to right-click on the procedure and select Procedure Data from the menu. Then, through this dialog, you can specify the number of cycles through this option. Notice that this unit procedure operates in a total of four cycles. However, when you add a new unit procedure, this number is one by default, so you need to change it if you want to increase the cycles. Specifying an amount of four cycles means that all the operations from this unit procedure are going to be carried out four times. So we start with a calibrate, it goes on to the other operations, and when it finishes, it starts again with a calibrate, and it does this a total of four times or the amount of cycles which you have specified. As I just mentioned, pre-processing and post-processing activities have been divided into two separate procedures as they are only carried out once in the process. An important thing to remember when doing this is that you need to specify that the various unit procedures, which are added as a result of the cycles operation, all utilize the same column. To specify that the procedures utilize the same column, right-click on the unit procedure then select Equipment Data, and then on the left-hand corner of this dialog, you can select the column that the procedure utilizes. It's column 101 in this case. The same holds true for the pre-processing column. Notice that through the flow sheet, you can also see the column which the procedure utilizes. Regarding the estimation of the life of the chromatography resin, SuperPro by default considers the pre- and post-processing procedures as regular chromatography cycles and consequently overestimates the amount of resin consumed per year. This is fixed by visiting the Consumables tab of the Equipment Data dialog for any of the columns, and then under the Include and Exclude Procedures in Consumable Use, you can uncheck the procedures which don't consume any extra resin. In conclusion, the program now starts operating the column by first carrying out the pre-processing activities, which are scheduled relative to the main process, then it continues to process that product in four cycles through this procedure, and finally it carries out post-processing activities. Let's now continue the tutorial by discussing how to model transfer panels and buffer delivery lines. As I mentioned in the first video, transfer panels can be modeled by accounting for its time of usage and scheduling using a generic box. As you can see here, transfer panels are not connected to any part of the process, but they do account for the transfer time required to transfer the buffer from the preparation vessel into the holding vessel. In SuperPro Designer, a generic box is a unit procedure that can be used to represent batch processing steps that are not explicitly available in the current version of SuperPro Designer. 
In this case, they are used to represent transfer panels. Generic boxes can be found through the Unit Procedures menu under Generic Boxes. In this case, the operation that has been added to the transfer panel is a hold operation. The hold up time is then made equivalent to the transfer time from any given preparation vessel to a holding vessel. This can be done by selecting the set by master slave relationship and then setting it up to be equivalent to the transfer out time of the unit procedure of interest. Furthermore, you also need to ensure that the scheduling has also been specified to also start at the same time of the transfer out operation. In this way, the transfer panel occupancy is captured and therefore can impose constraints on the schedule. Buffer delivery lines are also specified in the same way. For this model, a total of two transfer panels and four delivery lines were employed. Notice here that this transfer panel, TP102, is used at different times within the process. Also, for explanation purposes, a short description of its use has been added. Let's now proceed to discuss how to model inline dilution. Inline dilution is a process that some biopharmaceutical companies use to solve solution preparation and delivery issues. Storage volume and preparation vessel requirements, for example, can be significantly reduced by preparing concentrated solutions and diluting them prior to use. Inline dilution can be easily accounted for in SuperPro Designer through the use of a custom mixer. Custom mixers are selected from the Unit Procedures menu, through Mixing, Bulk Flow, and then choosing the Custom option. Furthermore, the mixing specifications can be defined by the user through the mix operation by right-clicking on the Unit Procedure and selecting Operation Data. As you can see here, there are various options for the way in which the user can specify the mixing data. The options include input ratio, output flow, and output composition. In this case, the option set output composition for WFI was chosen. Through this option, the final mass percentage or concentration can be specified. The final composition is then achieved by mixing the concentrated buffer and the diluent. Furthermore, SuperPro Designer can calculate the amount of the required materials by backpropagating the information that was specified in this unit procedure. To have the program do this, there are a couple of things you need to do. First, in the charge operation of the buffer procedure, which would be this one here, you need to select the option Use Amount on Stream, such as it has been specified here, instead of choosing the option set by user and specifying a given amount. Secondly, you need to bring up the Input Streams dialog to select the option Auto Adjust for that stream. This can be done either by clicking on the Test Tubes Looking button on the Operating Conditions tab of the Charge operation or by double clicking on the Streamline itself. The Auto Adjust option can be specified by checking this box. Doing so allows the program to auto adjust the amount of input material as backpropagated from another procedure. As I discussed in the first video, SuperPro Designer can be used for debottlenecking and cycle time reduction. Included with this example are various SuperPro Designer files and a README file that explain and analyze how to reduce the cycle time of a process. Let's now discuss that briefly, and for that, I'm going to bring up the basic SuperPro Designer file for this example. Cycle time reduction can be best explained by having a look at the equipment occupancy chart. First off, it's important to understand that the process cycle time is the time in between consecutive batches. If we look at the chart, that would be the time in between the moment where we start the first batch until the moment that we can start our second batch. Please note that each color represents a different batch. For this example, the process cycle time is two weeks and that can be seen by right-clicking on the chart and selecting scheduling summary and through this dialog that pops up, we can see that the cycle time is two weeks. 
Furthermore, the amount of batches that can be carried out with this cycle time and a specified annual operating time is displayed in this area. And finally, this dialog displays the bottleneck equipment, which would be our Bioreactor 101 in this case. It's obvious that under these conditions, the purification line is underutilized. The cycle time of the process can therefore be reduced and its throughput increased by adding another production bioreactor that operates in staggered mode, out of phase, compared to the original. This is done through the equipment data dialog of the fermentation procedure. The equipment data dialog can be brought up by right-clicking on the procedure and selecting the equipment data. Then, by turning on the staggered mode option, we can specify the amount of extra pieces of equipment which we would like to use. Let's now add an extra piece of equipment. The names of the extra equipment can be edited by clicking on the Names button in the same dialog. Let's call this one Bioreactor 101B. Let's now generate the new equipment occupancy chart so that you can see the differences. You can now see through this chart that you have an extra piece of equipment called Bioreactor 101B. Furthermore, if we bring up the scheduling summary, you'll see that the cycle time has now been reduced to 12.19 days instead of 14 days. Even though adding this extra bioreactor had a positive impact, we can also see that a new bottleneck has been created. It's important to mention that when debottlenecking a facility, the extra pieces of equipment should be introduced to the equipment that is the scheduling bottleneck. Therefore, at this point, we would need to add a new tank in order to further reduce the cycle time of this process. Following the same method, whereby a bottleneck is identified and removed one by one, the cycle time of this process is reduced to 3.5 days, as can be seen through another file included with this example. This availability of multiple bioreactors that operate out of phase reduces the cycle time of the process, even though the fermentation procedure still takes 14 days to complete. In this chart, the top rectangles represent CIP skids, and this is followed by some upstream equipment. Furthermore, if we scroll down, we can see how the multiple bioreactors that operate in staggered mode are displayed. Here you can see how the four available bioreactors are used for the first four batches, and then the first bioreactor is used again for the fifth batch, the second for the sixth batch, and so on. Also, if we scroll down to see the downstream processing procedures, you'll see that the time in between consecutive batches has been reduced. This concludes part two of this video tutorial. Please make sure to visit our website www.intelligent.com where you can download an evaluation version of Super Pro Designer and obtain a copy of this example. Also, make sure to watch our other videos where other interesting topics are discussed. Thanks for your attention.